Hi guys and welcome in this new video. In this video we'll talk about alpha generation and today we'll focus on the market regime prediction. So we'll use our previous features, we'll create a target and we'll try to find a good relation between our features and the target that we want to predict. Before going deeper, I just want to make a quick parenthesis. We have currently an amazing discount on the Alpha Grand program. So if you don't want anymore to create your trading strategies without a clear goal and clear processes, and you want to create a trading strategies factory to achieve your goal, I really think that the Alpha Grand program is made for you. So in this video, we'll create an alpha that will help us to detect the market regime. So we'll import some features, we'll create a target, and at the end, we'll have a good predictions of the market regime. But what we need to understand just very quickly is the difference between the features analyst part and the strategist part. Here, now, the alpha generation is the features analyst part. We just want to highlight some alphas, the market regime, the variation of the next week, of the next month, so we can really create alpha about whatever we want. And the goal is just to create the alpha, brings more information. And it's only in the strategy spot, creating the strategy with the risk management rules, combining different alphas, that we want to have a clear theory about our strategy. So for now, we just want to bring some information. And the goal about the alphas is not to find something amazing, it's just to bring more information. For example, if for now you do not have any information about the market and you say, okay, we have 50% to be in an upward trend and 50% to be in a downward trend, if you're able to find the trend with a 60% accuracy, it's amazing because you bring information, you bring more information. And when you will combine this alpha with another, with another, you will be able to bring a lot of information. So, as you can see there, I have changed a bit my DC features to create a target because the advantage when you create a target is that you can look forward, okay? Because you want to predict the future when your ML model. So, you can look forward and it's very easy to create something when you are able to look forward. So, there, I have used the future market regime function that is in the signals file, okay? And you can see that we have very interesting features because obviously when it's green, we are in an upward trend and when it's red, we are in a downward trend. But here, it's not an optimal features, okay? And it's obvious because as I said, we have only one week to create the alphas, the features, the strategy. So we do the thing that will bring the more information with the time that we have. And for example, let me just give you some advice to walk about on your side. Here, we are in an upward trend, okay? When we are in the green part there. But there, for example, in the target, just before the red, we do not want maybe to be in an upward trend. Because if we say, okay, now we are in an upward trend and we take a position because of that, finally, just after that, we will be in a downward trend. So we have many possibilities. We can begin the downward trend just previously. We can create a neutral zone. We will have the upward trend from there to there. Then we have a neutral zone. Then we have the downward trend, a neutral zone, the upward trend, a neutral zone, etc. Okay? We can really do a lot of things. But now, it's impossible to do that. If you want that I make more content about that, just tell me in the comments if you want a course about that, YouTube videos, just let me know. And if enough of you ask me for that, I will do it. So now we have our features, okay? I have just transformed this graphical market regimes into a variable, one or zero. Zero for the downward trend and one for the upward trend. So now let's talk about how we create an alpha. And the method that I will show you is just one method that I use. You can use a lot of methods, okay? But the most important is always to have a scientific process and to write 
all that you are doing. So first of all, we need to import some libraries, okay? And here I import the features library file. This file is in the features part and it will contain all the functions that we have created before, okay? All the features that we have created is there to be able to be called in another file. Then we'll import all the data for our major Forex currencies. The goal when you generate an alpha is not to test a lot of things and take the best, okay? You need to really find something interesting and if you remove one asset, you need to have a clear explanation for that, okay? You can't say, okay, I remove this asset because the strategy I want to apply on it doesn't work. It's not, it doesn't make any sense. You need to have really a scientific process. So I have imported the five Forex major currency, okay? So I import the data for them. I create my new target on each of them and the features also. So at the end, if I plot, for example, one data frame, I will have all the features and with the target. If I do the same for the GBP USD, I will have exactly the same thing, but not just with the same values. And at the beginning, I will take already the half of the data. Why? Because I really don't want to make any interferences between my IFA generation process with my research and the real strategy. I need to keep a lot of data to backtest and to estimate the robustness of my strategies, the strategies that I will create using this alpha, okay? So we have with the four hour time frames around 13,000 data. So I took 5,000 to allow me to do my research. So, and here I split again each data frame between a train set and a test set, okay? And then you have all the features that you will use to predict the target, okay? Why I have chosen this? Because you don't need to find, okay, with your feelings, the right features, okay? You can have some, I don't know, intuition. For example, the rolling ADF that will help us to detect if you are in a trending regime or a ranging regime can be really interesting as we are looking for the market regime, okay? For the spread, because it highlights a short-term volatility. Maybe if we have a huge volatility today, for the next uh, candles, we can have a market regime movement, okay? For the Kama market regime, I think it's obvious because it highlights the market regime, but with another features. For the autocorrelation, to check if we have a correlation between this price and the past data. The log transform will allow us to create the returns. And I think obviously that it is an amazing feature because if we have the previous return, it will help us to understand if the market regime will change or not. If we have a huge variation in an upward trend, maybe it will say that we are in an upward trend. The derivative to understand where the, the price is going and these three last features to estimate the volatility. So we create all these features and then we take all the features that we want. So the features that I have explained, okay? So the features from the math derivative, the features from the candle information, the spread, the log returns and many others, okay? But now the goal is to check how these variables are correlated to our target. So what we will do is taking only the train set, okay? And here we can see something very interesting. These three assets have not only the same correlation, okay, for each features and the target. So maybe what we can do is create a model that will be trained using these three assets. Why we can do that and why we should do that because we will increase the robustness of our model, okay? If we implement a model for each, it can be very difficult to find something which is not overfitted, okay? So if we take several assets, the 
weight will be more smooth and it will allow us to show more data to our model. And here we can see obviously that the features of the USD CAD have a lot of correlation with the target, okay? But not always in the same way as we can see. So we can't add this asset for our model. And for the last one, I think that we should even not you try to predict the market regime because as we can see, we do not have any relation with the features and our market regime target, okay? So first of all, we need to check about the features importance. And I will just do a quick loop over all the train to check which features is the most important. The MDI is to understand the features importance during the train mode and the SFA is the Shapley value. So here we can see that the rolling Yanzen volatility is the most important feature for the model, okay? And that the log return are also very important, okay? And what we should check now is the Shapley value. That is another way to estimate the features importance into a model. And as we can see, all the features bring uh, some information, okay? So we'll try first, okay, to do not waste too much time. So let's say that we'll keep all our features. And just to make a quick parenthesis, the features importances comes from a function, features importance, that I've created in the features importance file. It's very interesting to use it because it uses a random forest to detect the importance of each features during the training. So obviously, if we use that one to detect the features importance, what we should do is to use a random forest to predict the target. I'm sorry if I need to do it very quickly, but we have a lot of things to do today. So now we just have to create our model. So first of all, we'll create the model for EURUSD, GBPUSD and USDGPY. And after that, we'll take a look about the model, but only on the USD CAD. What we have done, first, we create a data frame with the features and the target, okay? We remove the non-value, the infinity values to be sure that we have a clear and a clean data set. Then we create the X and the Y. The list of X will allow us to create the features and the colon Y will allow us to extract our target. And there, as you can see, we had a shift between the X and the Y to be sure that we'll not predict the market region of today, for example, with some information that are computed using the close price, because obviously it will doesn't make any sense. It will just make us predict the past with the future. That's why we do not want to do that. So we need to add this shift. Then we split the data. We take a train set and a test set for the X and the Y. And our test set will represent 20% of the whole data set. We train the model, we do some prediction, and I have imported also some metrics, the confusion metrics, the accuracy score, and the F1 score. As we can see, we have very, 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 very good results, okay? There, we have very, very good results. But the problem is that it's only on 2000s data. So we need more robustness. We need to take more confidence into our model. So to really test it, okay, now we have trained it. We have done a little test, but to really find if it's a good model that we can keep, we need to do a cross validation. For this one, I have used a time series split. As you can see there, in red, you will have the train period and in blue, the test period. And here, you can see the distribution of our targets. To be sure that we will not, for example, train one train period with only red target and we have only, for example, green target into the test set. It's really important to take uh, a look and have a visualization about what we, what we are doing. And so there, I've just done a cross validation. And as we can see now, we have a difference with the accuracy. It is still very interesting because being able 
to predict the market regime with a 60% accuracy, it's very, very interesting. So that was our first alpha. But don't worry, tomorrow will bring more alpha to be able for the last day to create several trading strategies. And there, at the end, I have put some questions, some remarks that you will find also on the notes. So I hope you liked the video and don't hesitate to tell me in the comments if I was not too quick and if I was, I will just give you more information tomorrow to allow you what we have done today.